merciful. Fellow Gambians, a little more than two months ago, I announced my candidacy for president. And I outlined to the entire nation the reasons why I am running for president. In a few days' time, Gambians would decide. And this would be one of the most important decisions to be made in recent times. Surely, by the grace of God, on that day, Gambians would decide who would be the leader of this country, our beloved Gambia, for the next five years. It behoves me to remind you that this country is at a crossroads. It's at a very difficult moment. It is at a time when unemployment and underemployment, especially amongst the youth, is at its highest. The educational system in the country is outdated and not fit for purpose. Our healthcare system, or lack thereof, is even more problematic. People are dying under preventable circumstances. Agriculture is now at its doldrums. And the youth are wallowing in despair because there are hardly any opportunities for them. This is a terrible situation. To cap it all off, Forbes magazine has recently listed the Gambia as number 152 out of 153 countries in the worst to do business index. That is a terrible indictment of our country. Less than two months ago, we told, we, I established, together with members of my team, what we dubbed the turnaround Sobea movement. Indeed, it turned out to be a movement of young Gambian men and women whose fundamental desire it is to help change this country. We are not talking about a social re-engineering of our society. We are talking about making those pragmatic changes that are necessary to put Gambia on the path to socio-economic development. In a few days' time, you, I, and many of us would make the decision, the final call on who to elect as president. You have heard many of us on the campaign trail outline our policies and what we intend to do, while many others also dwelled on frivolous and vexatious personal attacks and character assassinations against people, including my humble self, uh, uh, peddling blatant lies that are so infantile in their nature that they are not worth responding to. Like I did throughout my politics, I take the Gambia very seriously and would focus on the issues that concerns you and I and our families and all of us as a people. And I want to talk to you about what I would wish to do if I have the privilege and the honor to be elected as your president in the next few days. Be rest assured that first and foremost, we will try to foster a government of national unity. The Gambia, we are now so badly polarized. We are polarized in terms of all isms and schisms. We are polarized in terms of region, polarized in terms of religion, polarized in, family, in terms of uh, ethnicity. All these parochial issues are things that hold back our development. If I have the privilege and the honor of being elected as your president, be rest assured that we would work assiduously in creating a reunification and reconciliation, full reconciliation of the Gambian people. That is why we adopt our motto as one Gambia, one people, and one destiny. 
We are all in one big boat and we all row together. If we row discordantly, we sink. If we do not row properly, we sink and all of us will sink together. On that basis, I pledge to establish a government of national unity, a government that would be inclusive and diversive, a government that would ensure that the true character of the Gambian people is firmly showcased in its composition. And the second, we would strive to kill the ugly head of corruption that has so badly uh, reared its head back in the Gambia's uh, uh, economic and governmental activities. Corruption is setting this country back big time. That is, in fact, one of the principal reasons why Gambia is now second to last in the world as worst country to do business. It is my plan that we will tackle corruption and ultimately try to eliminate it, both corruption and graft. To do this, one simple intervention would be to augment the salaries of all Gambians who are gainfully employed by establishing a minimum wage and ensuring that our people are paid livable wages. Wages that would ensure and reinforce their dignity as human beings, not wages that would make them the mockery of unemployed people. The next issue for us, an important priority one, would, the, would be the security sector. If, you, if we are fortunate to be elected as your humble servant, President of the Republic of this country, we would end the presence of economic in the Gambia and restore the sovereign dignity of members of our armed forces. These are people we respect as top-notch professionals who have served Gambia loyally and royally throughout the periods of their services as individual soldiers. I have come across them around the world when I visited United Nations peacekeeping missions. They have served the world with distinction. There is no reason why in their own country they would be sidelined at the altar of political expediency. If, if Team S. Fall is fortunate, to be elected as your humble servants. We would end the military domination of the Gambia and restore the sovereign dignity of our people and our armed forces by entrusting the security of this country to our brothers and sisters, with whom we have absolutely no problem. We have complete trust in them. The agriculture of this country is in total neglect and in steep decline. I have had the honor and privilege of visiting Jahali Pachar rice, rice fields in CRR. I have also visited Chamen Nyanija. I have also visited Kuntaur, the rice fields and the rice mill. Our rice fields, our God-given endowment is in a complete state of disregard. This is terribly disappointing to our people. This neglect is a complete affront to the lives and livelihoods of the people whose everything center around those rice fields. The fact that our government could neglect this place for five good years without setting foot therein is a terrible disaster. I promise, fellow Gambians, that if you elect us to office, we would make massive investments in agriculture, in particular in the rice producing areas, and ensure that Gambia would become self sufficient in rice. I would rather eat Gambian rice and dempetem than eat the third grade rice that is imported into this country at very high prices. Our agriculture stands a good chance. 
we have the river Gambia, which can be a good source of irrigation uh, for, for, for farms along the river. With the right investments in agriculture, the Gambia can flourish. The Gambia can begin to produce quite a lot. Uh, Gambia had made quite an impact in the, pres in the, in the production of chrysanthemum flowers and Gambian flowers had received international acclaim. Uh, we can invest in horticulture, we can invest in fruits. Uh, along the CRR, there are good investments there in the production of bananas. With the right choice of produce, the Gambia can make a mark in agriculture. And I promise to invest heavily in agriculture uh, in order to help bring back agriculture as the engine of development in this country. In saying all this, my mind goes to the, the diaspora who have contributed significantly in resuscitating uh, Gambia, especially today. Few years ago, the total diaspora remittance to this country was about $300 million. With their hard work and commitment to helping Gambia, their families who are living here, the diaspora this year remitted over $627 million. That is a huge leap, almost double the 2017-2018 figures. The diaspora are an important region for the Gambia. Their contribution cannot be underestimated. I dare say that the diaspora deserve to be embraced. We deserve, they, they deserve our commendation. I have been a diasporan, and I know how hard it is to work from 6 to mid, 6 a.m. to midnight every day in order to help feed families back home, in order to help build a house and shelter families back home. So you, the members of the diaspora, I feel your pain. I know how hard it is. Be rest assured that if Tim S. Ambaifal is lucky, is privileged and honored to be elected into office, be rest assured we will take care of your needs. We would address your problems. We would roll out the red carpet to you. And we would embrace you and help you to make Gambia what it is, what it needs to be. To bring Gambia from the doldrums into the 21st century. We would not vilify you. We would not castigate you. We would embrace you and we would support you so that you can help participate in the transformation of your motherland, the Gambia. Our biggest problem today is the healthcare sector, or the lack of it. I say this because Gambian hospitals are now basically a hospice. We have had false promises of building 1,500 hotel beds. I know that is a fanciful dream, and not based on reality. Uh, the politics of deception should end. I promise that if you make me your president, I will work very hard in establishing a good, effective, and efficient healthcare system in this country by building a network of hospitals connected with regions that are able to help deal with all the healthcare problems of the Gambia and its citizens. Healthcare is very important. It's not a matter for joke. We are talking about the lives of our people especially our women and the children. Basic equipment such as mammogram machines, dialysis machines, are matters to dream about in this country. If you choose me as your president, be rest assured that we would establish a healthcare system that would address all those problems. These should in fact be basic and not matters that we dream about. The massive misappropriation or misallocation of resources that goes on in this country would end under my leadership. 
A whopping $677 million has been voted for the office of the president to do what I do not know. A lot of that prop money would be reassigned or reallocated to other sectors or more productive sectors of our society instead of feeding the, uh, the, uh, the wishes of one particular individual. And the youth sector should benefit massively from this. Our youth are in a terrible and pitiable state to the extent that many would rather go and endure the perilous journeys across the globe for, in search of greener pastures, what is called Barcelona or Barsaha. It's a terrible shame that the only hope of our youth is to trek through these deserts into, in search for greener pastures. The monies that are being unnecessarily sent to the office of the president could have been used partly to alleviate the plight of the youth. But beyond that, I promise that the youth would be given priority in this country. Uh, our investments in the youth would be tied with our investments in education. We would ensure that there are sporting facilities available for the youth, but also we would establish an educational system that would address all the needs of the youth, including providing STEM education and TVET education. These are the new models of education that would foster the development of any country. If we in Gambia think that we could do it differently, like we typically do in most cases, we are doomed to fail. TVET is the way to go. We should ensure that we provide all the vocational skills that our youth need in order to build this country. Even for those of them who may choose to travel abroad, they would have reached there, equipped with a skill or a profession that would enable them to do very well wherever they find themselves. So these are two important areas that my government, if we are fortunate to be elected into office, would, uh, would give uh, a great priority to. Infrastructure is another big issue. The lack of it keeps us trapped in poverty and underdevelopment. World Bank has, has World Bank studies have revealed that for many African countries, the lack of infrastructure reduces their potential for economic growth by 40%. For 50 something years, 56 ideas say, we've been trapped in this unenviable situation. I promise to change this by making massive investments in infrastructure. I promise that we would build in our first five years more than 1,000 kilometers of roads. But our infrastructural development should not only be limited to roads. We also want to improve the ICT infrastructure in this country by making Gambia an important hub for information communication technology for Africa. The, the, the way the world is going now, for countries like the Gambia that are not so steep in its mineral endowments, in fact, services and educational investments are the better way to go. I promise you that if you make me your president, we would make such significant investments in the ICC sector to make the Gambia an enviable hub for information communication technology. I would not dwell in funny promises like making Birkama a free Wi-Fi zone. No, I am talking about making proper massive investments by creating internet parks and so forth that would enable ICT experts to come to the Gambia and invest in this country. Uh, fellow Gambians, these things are not just lofty promises. These are doable. All we need is to have the right educated and enlightened leadership such as the one that I prefer to, I, I promise to offer to the Gambians. Be rest assured, that if you elect us into office, we would bring on board 
Gambians from all political parties, Gambians from both at home and abroad, who have the skills, the qualification, the experience, and the expertise, and above all, the integrity to commit only to working selflessly for their country. Give us this opportunity. I promise you, I promise you that by December 2026, the Gambia would be offering a completely different face from the one you're seeing now. And then the Gambia would deserve to be called once again the smiling coast of Africa. I thank you all. Thank you. SR Fall will contest the December election.